What's up, YouTube? It's some random guy with a reef tank. This is a Red Sea Reefer 250. Doing some maintenance to the tank, kind of prepare myself for next week. Some uncharted waters for me. I uh, pulled the tunes pumps out again and cleaned them up because they were filthy from me messing around with the refugium. Had, uh, you know, Ketomorpha stuck in the pumps. They were just dirty, so I cleaned them out. I've got the j bow the VCP 4000 or 4500, whatever it is, down here running at full power. Uh, mixing in some vinegar and water, and then I'll take it apart and get it clean. But I like to run it uh, like this, so I can basically just clean it up as much as I can um, without touching it. And hopefully the vinegar will take care of some of the bristle worms and whatnot in there for me because, uh, yeah, I really don't want to get stung by any of those. Um, aside from that, uh, got the screen top off now. My next focus is a new board for the light bar, getting the lights off the tank, getting those cleaned up. Um, I cleaned the inside of the glass a little bit yesterday. I need to do it again. Clean the outside of it from where I've been in the tank with uh, moving the pumps around and whatnot. No clue what went on with this hammer. Um, this little torch right here is not very happy. This big hammer that I've had forever started to do this the other day. And I have no clue uh, also what's going on with that. So uh, what I was talking about a second ago is on Instagram, Thirsty's Reef um, does these raffles, basically. And there was a CSB, a Colorado Sunburst. And if you remember from some uh, one of my previous videos, I talked about maybe getting an anemone for the tank. Um, so anyway, uh, he's holding this raffle. I'm scrolling through Instagram one day, uh, uh, just one day uh, this past couple weeks, and I see this Colorado Sunburst anemone. And I don't know anything about him. I know nothing about him except for the fact that he's having 30 slots, and um, they're $20 a slot, which means it's $600, right? So no big deal. I mean, everybody's in it to make a little bit of money. I like to gamble a little bit. I'm willing to spend 20 bucks on this to see if I win this coral or not. So I uh, sent him the money, tell him what number I want, which the number that I choose is significant to me. So I'm only gonna gamble with one number on this. Uh, a couple days go past, I completely forget about it. A couple more days go past, I completely forget about it. I wake up in the middle of the night and I look at my phone uh, to see what time it was. And I saw I had been mentioned on his page and then I saw winter or something of that sort and I just put my phone down, went back to sleep. The next morning at about 10 a.m., uh, 10, 10, 30 a.m., finally look at Instagram again, and I see that I've won this Colorado Sunburst Anemone. And now I'm kind of worried because before <laughs> I was like, yes, I want one, but I don't know what to do because I know it's probably going to walk all over the place and yada, yada, yada. So um, anyway, uh, I won it. I started doing some research on it. And my goodness, these things are expensive. So I'm even more nervous considering the fact that it's a super, super expensive coral. So let me just show you a clip right now, uh, and then we'll start back with the video. So again, he does these raffles on Instagram, and um, you know, like I said, I don't mind to gamble every once in a while. The only reason I'm doing a voiceover here is because he's playing music in the background. I don't want to be demonetized, truth be told, but it was very close, very close between me and uh, the person that was below me, I believe. Um, so I was, you know, shocked whenever I watched this video, let alone whenever I kind of woke up the next day and kind of remembered to look and see that I had even won. So this is the actual specimen, uh, that I'm getting and uh, I'm going to leave thirsty reef, uh, Instagram down below. He's, it seems like he's auctioning off corals quite a bit. So check them out. At the end of that clip, I know I said auction, but it's a raffle. So you're just buying as many spots as you want for a chance to win whatever he's raffling off. So I also took the time to pull out some estrogen starfish. And uh, there's a, uh, a fish shop. It's about an hour and 15, well, probably about an hour away from me. And I messaged them and they said they can get some Harlequin shrimp. And I think they got some. It's like a two hour round trip, but it's almost worth going to look at one this time. And I think, um, I think that, uh, 
The next one that I get, I'll leave the pumps off for a little while and let the little shrimp get used to uh, what's going on with the tank. But I would like to get some cleaner shrimp also, uh, just because I don't have the hot fish anymore. I don't think I have to worry about any shrimp in the tank. So yes, uh, back to the Colorado Sunburst. I'm pretty nervous, to be honest with you, about that coral. It's gonna be, uh, unless I don't know, unless there's something magically super expensive in here, uh, aside from the rare yellow tang, but uh, it's gonna be, the most expensive coral I've ever had. I'm pretty nervous about it. My plan is to kind of set it on this rock right here. Um, it's not, this rock isn't attached to this rock, but I plan on setting it on that rock. But I do know that wherever it wants to go, it's gonna go. And quite honestly, as beautiful as it is, I'm okay with that. So, uh, you know, wish me luck because uh, I've, I know nothing about anemones. And I've got about a week and a half to read up on them, start researching and try to figure out what's right. And one thing that I did see was some people said, turn off the flow and let the, the coral get used to it. But others said to not do that because if you turn off the flow and then turn the flow on, the anemone will be more apt to move to a spot that it likes because now it has better flow. So I fully expect it to get like midway up the rocks. Um, so I don't know, you know, I have no clue. Uh, it's probably a pretty small anemone given the fact that these things are, uh, I don't know that they're rare. Um, maybe they are rare because of the price and that's what they're sought after. But uh, yeah, stay tuned because I have a feeling uh, it's gonna be a beautiful piece judging by the pictures. Uh, like I said, this thing's been going for about 20, 30 minutes. I'll probably shut that off here in a minute, take it apart and get it all cleaned up. And last, well, a couple of last things. I say last, but got some more salt. This is the salt that I've used for a long time now. Uh, it mixes up clean for me. It's not too expensive. Um, I did kind of shoot myself in the foot with this one because there was a live aquarium coupon code. I waited too long and uh, over, uh, well, I misjudged on how much salt I had the last time I did a water change. And I could have waited a little bit longer for another coupon code. But um, if I would have waited about another week, I'd have got a coupon code from Live Query for buying the salt. But yes, uh, this salt, um, you know, mind you, I haven't tested my parameters in a very long time. But uh, whenever I did test, this was right in line with everything that my tank has got has going on. Now you can see the box is a little beat up, and I felt terrible for the UPS person, uh, USPS person, because they delivered at USPS to me and not UPS or FedEx or anything. So she carried this all the way up to the, uh, to the steps. So big bag of fresh salt for me. And then I did clean the Eheim heater and um, I'm gonna do a little bit of changing on the schedule. I got to feed them twice a day with two rotations each time. I'm gonna change it to twice a day with one rotation. Throw it back on the tank um, whenever I put the return pump back in. Real quick before I close the video out, I do want to mention that because I don't have my return pump in the sump section, uh, I do have flow in the sump section. There's some flow in here, there's some flow there, but I did turn the heaters off. I don't need them on down here. Uh, the house is still pretty warm. I don't need that on um, because the water is just sitting here and it's been sitting here for about 20, 30 minutes. In total, it'll probably sit here for about 40 minutes. The display tank, Again, not worried about, got flow in the tank. Um, not worried about the temperature drop. If it does drop, it's gonna be minimal. So as you can see, I do have the Inkbird controller turned off there. So just a word of advice. I don't like leaving heaters on acrylic turned on with no flow on them. I know that the heaters are surrounded by the Catamorpha and in the water column. So it should be good, but as a precaution, I always pull them off there. So with that being said, Appreciate you watching the video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Pelfrey's Reef. Be sure to check out the website at pelfrey.net. I'll catch you on the next one.